Hey guys, Mr. Flanagan here, doing a quick recap on how do we close a GDP gap. We're going to be looking at how to solve a recession because that is by far the most commonly asked about way um, on the AP test in terms of solving a gap. Now, they could ask you to solve an inflationary gap, and all that means is we would want to reduce spending or increase taxes. But we're going to focus on a recession where we want to expand the economy because, again, that is by far the most frequently asked about. Uh, type of question on the AP exam. So here's our given information. We have full employment GDP or full employment output at $750 billion. So that is our maximum. That is where we want to be, where we should be. That would be at YF on our ADAS graph, the YF label coming down from LARAS. However, we are currently sitting at output of $550 billion which is a problem because our current output would hopefully be our full employment output, but right now it's not. So we are in a temporary economic problem. We are also given information that the MPC is 0 0.8, which we'll come back to in a bit. So our first step is we wanna see what is the actual size of the gap that we need to close. So how we do that is just some basic subtraction. So we're given our full employment maximum output of $750 billion, we know that we are currently at 550 billion. So we just do some basic subtraction and we see that our gap, we are short by or fall short by $200 billion. So we need to encourage $200 billion worth of economic activity. And also just because when we're given an MPC, it never hurts to write down the MPS. We know that the MPC plus the MPS has to equal one because there's only two things we can do with money, consume or spend and then save. So again, our first step was to find what is the actual gap, and we've done that with some basic subtraction. Our gap is $200 billion moving forward. Now the next step, I have the whole process from top to bottom here. We already found out our gap on the last slide. And so this question is asking us up here, by how much should the government change its spending in order to close a $200 billion gap? So since the question is asking us about spending, we want to figure out the spending multiplier, which is one over the MPS. And from our previous slide, the MPS was 0.2. So one over 0.2 is five, or 20 cents goes into a dollar five times. Now, our formula for by how much should the government change its spending is the actual GDP gap over, in this case, the spending multiplier. Because again, the question asks about spending. So we do $200 billion, our gap, over the multiplier of five, which we just found, and do that basic division, and we get $40 billion. That means in order to close a recessionary gap of $200 billion, the federal government only needs to spend $40 billion. Because we have this spending multiplier, if the government spends $40 billion, it will multiply out into $200 billion, and we can check our work here. If we were given a scenario that said, the government increases spending by $40 billion right here, and our spending multiplier was five, 40 billion times five would multiply out to a $200 billion increase in GDP. So the answer to this question is, the government should increase its spending by $40 billion in order to close a $200 billion GDP gap, our multiplied effect. The second way you could be asked about is, well, instead of spending, how much should the government change its taxes in order to close the GDP gap? So again, our economy is $200 billion below where it should be. So that means we want to expand our economy. So same exact process as before, except we're gonna replace the spending multiplier with the tax multiplier because the question asked us about taxes. So the tax multiplier is negative MPC over MPS, but in this case, we're trying to help the economy grow, so we want to decrease taxes. And if we decrease taxes, that actually has a positive impact on the economy. So we can take out this little negative sign right here because we want to decrease taxes to increase consumer spending. So we just plug in our MPC and our MPS that we figured out a while ago, 0.8 over 0.2, and that gets us to four. And if you have trouble with 0.8 over 0.2, Whenever you have a decimal over a decimal, just cross out the decimals, treat it like eight over four, or excuse me, eight over two, which gives us four. 
Same process as before. In order to figure out how much should the government change taxes in order to close a $200 billion gap, we do the gap in GDP, which is $200 billion, over the tax multiplier, which is four. $200 billion over four, the division gets us to $50 billion. And now we say that we would want to decrease taxes by $50 billion because if the government lowers taxes, that gives more money to the consumers who then go out and spend it. If you had said we raise taxes by 50 billion, you would actually be hurting and making this $200 billion gap even worse because you're taking money away from the consumers. And the same math down here applies. You can check if the government lowers taxes by $50 billion and the multiplier was four, a $200 billion increase in GDP will occur right here below the cursor. So what's the lesson to take from here? So the government can either spend $40 billion or change taxes by $50 billion. Now, the reason why the government changing taxes, this number is higher, is because spending by the government immediately gets multiplied in the economy. They say we're going to spend $40 billion. That $40 billion hits the economy and multiply, ripple, 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 all the way out into our full $200 billion effect. However, if the government changes taxes, taxes first basically get filtered through the consumers, you and me. So if our taxes go down, we have more money. However, we're probably going to save some of that money. So instead of it having the full effect of multiplying, we essentially lose some of the multiplied effect to saving, putting money in the bank or under your mattress or in your books or burying it in your backyard, however you might do it. So in order to have the same effect on GDP, the government would have to lower taxes by more than it would spend because it loses some of that money to, again, savings. So if a question ever asks you um, to calculate how much the government should spend, then you calculate the spending. And then if it asks you, well, would taxes need to change by more or less than the spending to have the same impact? You would say taxes would have to be changed by a greater amount because of that multiplier effect that people save some money and that money gets lost when it goes through taxes through the consumer first compared to spending where it just gets fully multiplied out right from the beginning. So if you have any more questions on this, come on in and see me. If you want to try out some sample questions, I can make some up for you. Otherwise, hopefully this is helpful and uh, we'll see you next time.